My name is Landon Turner, and I just turned 60 this year. I have a 25-year-old son named Jack. However, my connection with my son has deteriorated, and he no longer visits me. I frequently regretted how I raised him, because it led to the situation we're in now. I lost my lovely wife while Jack was still in elementary school. My wife had been frail since childhood, and she died at the young age of 45. At my wife's funeral, I didn't mind the disapproving looks from relatives. I cried like a small kid. Jack was more composed, telling me, Dad, it is sad, but let us say our goodbyes to Mom. But my anguish only lasted till the funeral. Back then, I was running a real estate company that I inherited from my father. The day following my wife's funeral, I awoke to phone calls from clients. That's exactly what I had devoted clients to care for, and now I had to raise Jack on my own. I snapped out of it after those phone conversations and went to my workplace. At the same time, I participated in school activities and meetings. I had to take on a role that my wife had previously played on her own. There's no way my poor self could manage work and school events flawlessly on my own. I quickly gave up and decided to temporarily shut down my business. I transferred my clients to another real estate firm so that I could spend time with Jack. But when I arrived at his school, Jack sneered at me, saying, Dad, I told you not to come. He even complained, Don't tell anyone you are my father. I'd be a stranger if I didn't say who my parents were or why I was in school. Even now, when participating in activities, I wear a name badge that says Walker. I couldn't understand why my son had suddenly started giving me the cold shoulder, but it didn't take long for me to figure it out. Hey, isn't that your father? What is he doing in school on a weekday? Does he have nothing else to do? My mother said that after your mother died, your father became unemployed, correct? Jack remained silent, looking down while his classmates mocked him. I ran over and told them I was just taking a break from work. It's similar to a summer or winter break. My son, however, received additional jeers from his peers for taking this chance. Your father is simply unemployed and faking a vacation. Your family is poor. I'll share the bread I had for lunch with you. Darn you, chatting with me has just made me seem worse. As his peers made fun of him, Jack became increasingly resentful. Despite knowing that my son was being mocked, all I could do was look the other way. I can't remember how many times I cried alone because I felt so bad. When my son Jack entered middle school, he began hanging out with delinquents. He would sleep over at friends' houses and hang out in a gas station parking lot till late at night. Cell phones were not extremely widespread back then, and it was unusual for a middle schooler to own one. Jack started coming home less and less, and I had no idea where he was or what he was doing. When I received calls from the school informing me of a complaint from a nearby gas station, all I could do was apologize. When I went to Jack's school, his rowdy classmates would call me names like good for nothing and bottom of the barrel all throwing empty cans at me. Jack had become more violent since entering middle school and I was afraid to even talk to him because I didn't know what he would do. I wish I had handled things better when he was still in elementary school, but what was the proper way for a parent to deal with a child's bad behavior? I had no idea how to connect with a teen and was very bewildered. He skipped school with abandon, even fleeing during class. His grades were at rock bottom. At a parent-teacher conference, they informed me that even Jack could attend a private high school, which reassured me. I'm delighted there was a high school he could attend. The setting and his peers will all change, and I hoped he'd relax a little after starting high school. Jack began to take his lessons seriously shortly after beginning high school, just as I had planned. He studied diligently and began scoring slightly above average on tests. And he even went to college. His contempt for me, however, persisted even when I entered high school. He proceeded to hop from one friend's house to another, never returning home. After enrolling in college, he began living alone in a dorm and covering his tuition by working part-time. He was living independently, which was admirable, but he was as frigid as ice with me. Even after he started working, he never returned home. Then, unexpectedly, when Jack was about 25, which I hadn't seen in years, he called me. He calls me unexpectedly and says, I found someone I want to marry. Then he says, next Sunday at 2 p.m., we'll meet at a fancy restaurant, so be there. And he tells me about his intentions without even asking if I am available. I'm like, hold on, this is too sudden. But when I became upset, he merely said, if you can't make it, don't bother. He hangs up the phone with a chilly attitude. I had conflicting thoughts, but there's no denying that he's my beloved only kid. So for his sake, I went to the nice restaurant at the hour he specified. When I arrived at the restaurant, her family was already there, and they said, Who are you? 
It was all quite harsh and unexpected. I'm like you call me unexpectedly and then ask who. Come on. Even though I'm seething, her parents simply say, nah, we didn't call you. And they are as cold as my son was. Now my son Jack is standing there, smirking fiercely. This guy is up to something, still unsure of what's going on. I enter the eatery. There's no mention of Jack or his partner, Aurora. Instead, I was the focus of their attention, and they had just treated me like an intruder. Then Jack begins going off like, this guy here dropped out of high school and worked, but since mom died, he's just been loafing around, telling Aurora and her parents. I'm like, hey, this is not the time or place, but he's not having any of it. Finally, Aurora burst out laughing. For real? Can a person get hired with only a middle school education? And Aurora's father says, wow, you were raised by a high school dropout and layabout, and now you have a college degree and a job at a big company. You mistook your elderly man for someone he wasn't, right? I am praising Jack. I was too tired to argue and left, saying, say whatever you want, I'm here. However, just as I am about to say so, a waiter appears from behind me with the food. Apologies for the wait. Oh, the food hadn't even arrived yet. I was so agitated that I forgot. I attempted to calm down and decided to eat what was in front of me before leaving. But the dinner is only brought out for Jack, Aurora, and Aurora's parents. The server says, I am sorry, we had a reservation for four, giving me this look. Aurora's mother replies, yes, that's correct. Don't worry about him, he's not a member of our family. Giving the waiter a nice smile, the waiter nods and backs away, clearly uneasy. Just when I'm about to lose it, Aurora's father cuts me off. He says, we don't want anything to do with a deadbeat high school dropout. Our family and relatives are all bank employees, doctors, and executives in major corporations. You do not belong here, please leave. That was plenty, I said. Do you only care about your degree and career history? Aren't you a little crazy? And I got up to leave. Aurora's father responds, I work at Bank of America, where education and job history are very important for client trust. Of course, as a layabout, you wouldn't know. Oh, you work for Bank of America? That's quite impressive. I mentioned this as I was leaving, but they didn't hear me. The next day, I visited Bank of America, where Aurora's father works. As a man who has been dubbed a deadbeat by my son, his classmates, my son's fiance, and her family, I must say that I am not a deadbeat. After my wife died, I temporarily shut down the real estate firm I was conducting. But let me clarify, it was only a temporary closure. I did not permanently shut it down. After my wife died, I moved my business to online management so that I could focus on my son's school events and meetings. When I owned a real store, most of my customers were neighbors. However, after transitioning to online management, I was able to serve consumers from across the country. For example, residents living in small communities an hour's drive from the nearest rail station, as well as Americans living abroad, these people began offering me more consultations on renting and buying properties. Thanks to the internet, I was able to grow my property portfolio and reach a larger audience. Running a real estate firm online enabled previously unthinkable feats. In addition, as a hobby, I was very engaged in stocks and investing. Currently, I have $50 million deposited with Bank of America, where Aurora's dad works. When I arrived at the bank, I immediately demanded to speak with the branch manager and explained everything that had transpired the day before. One of your employees told me that this bank functions on trust based on educational background and employment history. So, as a result of such a comment, I have lost all trust in this bank. Could you please proceed with the account closing? As I was saying this, the bank manager kept apologizing profusely and finally explaining the account termination process with a teary face. Oh, I almost forgot something vital. There's this troublemaker who hasn't paid the rent on the flat I own for two years. I'd have been ignoring it, thinking he was my son, but not anymore. I sent my kid a notice requesting two years rent. Three days later, Aurora's father and my idiotic son stormed into my home. Why did you report me to the branch manager? That was underhanded. Dad, what's up with that notice? If you're the manager, please cover for me. I groaned and added, I lost trust in the bank after learning about your practice of judging clients based on their education and employment history. Are you panicking because of what one person said? Have you have anything to hide? And Jack, just because we're family doesn't mean you can avoid paying rent. Pay your own rent. Aurora's father yelled, because you went around stirring the pot, I received a number of complaints from my other clients. My employer scolded me because of what you did. The nerve. No, I did not stir the soup. 
I just told the anecdote in a casual conversation with my family and clients. I did not tell them to close their accounts. My son snapped at me as I spoke with a smile. What about the client's dad? You're just a deadbeat, right? Do you think a deadbeat could afford to build such a large house in such a desirable area while maintaining this lifestyle? I'd even done some renovations recently. As I responded, my son looked perplexed and inquired, What is that? Did you get into debt or something? I'm fed up with you. I took a sabbatical from my real estate work and subsequently started an online business, which I'm currently doing. How many times do I have to tell you that my remarks made my son pallid as a ghost? What? I had no clue. I thought you were just working part-time. Aurora's father began ranting, you're a real piece of work, keeping your occupation secret, even from your own son. I became irritated and said, say whatever you want. I closed the entrance door. Outside, I heard them shouting, you've ruined my reputation. I'm going to sue you. I can't believe my old man missled me for so long. I'm not going to let him do this to me. The two of them were making a fuss. However, after approximately 10 minutes of ranting, it seemed that they were fatigued and everything quieted down. So after they understood that shouting was pointless, I assumed they wouldn't bother coming around here again. I breathed a sigh of relief and went to pour myself a cup of coffee. I just heard my son's voice outside again. You are a big giant liar. What? Are you still here? I replied as I peeked out the window and saw Aurora's father and my son spray painting my front door. You have got to be kidding me. What are they up to? Just as I was ready to step outside and tell them off, I heard a police siren approaching. Could it be that someone in the neighborhood called the police? My assumption was correct. When I stepped outside, the two of them were detained by police who had arrived in response to a neighbor's complaint. There he is, the big huge liar. I lost all of my credibility at work because of him. As they yelled, the cops quietly loaded them into the patrol car, saying, all right, okay, we'll take it from here. Then one of the officers, who appeared to have just noticed me, approached me with an unusually pleasant look. Sir, could you please join us to make your statement? Why me? But I suppose I'm the victim here. I'm going to spill the beans on all of their antics. When we arrived at the police station, I handed the officers a video from my phone. It was footage from the security camera I had put at my front door. The camera had captured all of their ranting and antics. What an excellent piece of proof, the officer exclaimed with a gleam in his eye and my questioning ended quickly. The police issued a strong warning to my son and Aurora's father, and they were forced to sign a restraining order to stay away from me. And it turns out that the entire neighborhood witnessed their bizarre behavior. One of my son's coworkers, who lives nearby, had been discussing it at work. You won't believe this, but Jack was apprehended and arrested for spray painting his father's house. I was so astonished that I filmed the entire incident. My son became the talk of the town at work and with clients, and his employer eventually demoted him. I returned to report the event to Bank of America, where Aurora's father worked. When I showed the manager the security camera footage on my phone, his face became as white as a sheet. I heard Aurora's father was ultimately sacked, and she understandably called off her engagement to Jack. Jack and Aurora's families escaped to a remote rural location. Apparently, Aurora's parents came to work part-time at my brother's gas station in the sticks. They're not good. No matter how many times I demonstrated how to arrange shelves, they couldn't get the feel of it. I had to give them the boot as soon as possible, and word has it that the adjacent petrol stations and farms followed suit. According to my brother, Aurora's parents appeared to be unable to secure a permanent job and are bouncing from one position to the next at gas stations and farms as a couple. Furthermore, I heard Aurora lavish her partners, including my son, with expensive gifts such as watches, and she was in debt as a result. The little money her parents earn from their part-time jobs appears to go directly toward paying off their daughter's debts, and it's unclear how they make ends meet. It has been five years since then, and my kid is now 30. He seems to have changed for the better. After being treated with love by the people in the little village where he moved, he approached me several times and sincerely apologized. I was naive and immature. I didn't even bother to grasp your profession and instead labeled you as good for nothing. I can't express enough how much I regret it. Seeing the difference in my son's attitude, I decided to let him live with me. He now works at a nearby company and is gradually assisting me with my work. However, he is still damp behind the ears, and I have my doubts about my complete confidence in him. I'm hesitant to pass over all of my job to him, but I'm going to study his behavior and attitude toward work and make decisions appropriately. 
If he can demonstrate that he has truly turned his life around, I may consider handing him the reins of my firm. But if I told him that, he may become overly thrilled and say, for real, I'll give my two weeks notice tomorrow and act on impulse. I live with my son, hoping that one day I'll be able to trust him with everything.